Hello, I'm, I'm John Quintero and welcome to the North Star Resort outside of Reno, Nevada for the last leg of the Great Western Pro-Am Series. Teams from all over the United States came as early as Thursday, October 7th to prepare for this event. After the teams had settled into their accommodations at the resort, they are quick to make their way out onto the event site to run the playing fields and to plan out their strategies. But it takes a little more than arriving a few days early to prepare for this event. We're going to take you back in the month of September, where I had a chance to observe the Jokers Wild practicing in Portland, Oregon. Hi, I'm Phil Smith. We're at Splat Action Paintball Games outside of Portland, Oregon. We have a chance to look in on Jokers Wild, an up-and-coming pro paintball team from Oregon. I had a chance to speak with Jerry Williamson, captain of Jokers Wild, and asked him what, in particular, they were going to work on in practice. Um, we work a lot on trying to gain 5 eighths of the field. Um, communication, I think communication is a major part of paintball, you know, knowing your live players, dead players, um, where you can push on a field, where you can't push on a field, um, things like that. Um, we work a lot on, uh, you know, defensive moves, offensive moves, um, seeing whose gun's going to be, you know, long ball gun, etc., etc., and trying to find which players, you know, at that moment are working better together, really. We kind of play the field as the as the field develops. Um, we go into codes when you know a player reads a situation where he thinks he can push, or he's got an angle here or something, or he's making a special move. He communicates to the player next to him, who and then turn and communicates across the field. We kind of play kind of a uh, freestyle ball, you know. And there's really not a set plan that this guy has to go here and has to go there. You have uh, usually a first position that you hit, and then maybe a secondary position, but. Um, we do a lot of freelance, and uh, it's just that communication across the field, knowing when it's clear, or somebody's there, if you got somebody, when you got to get through there, it makes a big difference. Coming up next, team introductions and preliminary play when we return. Every year in Portland, Oregon, don't forget to stop by Splat Action Paintball Field, Oregon's largest and longest running field. There's over 60 guns available for rent, and over 80 acres and 15 fields to play on. Come experience the thrill, the excitement, only at Splat Action, located just southeast of Portland, Oregon. Welcome back to day one of the Great Western Pro-Am in Reno, Nevada. 11 amateur and 11 professional teams have traveled from all over the country to compete for over $20,000 in prizes. The amateur teams are Fatal Swoop from California, second in the amateurs in the 93 Bay City Masters. The Untouchables, also from California. From the Pacific Northwest, the always tough Washington Rain. And Black Sunday from California, taking third in the 93 Dallas Open. Out of British Columbia, we have Team Storm. The Jokers Wild from Oregon, first in the amateurs in Portland, and fourth in the amateurs in the 93 Bay City Masters. From the state of Texas, we have Urban Survival. And from Sacramento, California, we have the Dogs of War, led by their captain, Rick Wilcox. From the state of Washington, we have Eclipse. And from the Bay Area of California, another team called Storm. And finally, from the Lone Star State, the number one ranked amateur team, the Texas Black Diamonds. On the other side of the coin, we have the Pros. From Florida, we have the Palm Beach Predators. And out of California, we have Tour de Force, winners of the 93 Bay City Masters. From New Hampshire, we have the Wild Geese. And from Illinois, we have Team Aftershock, winners of the 93 Boston Cup. And out of the Bay Area of California, the always tough Ironmen, NPPL's number one ranked team. We have Bat Company from Maryland. And from the South, the Texas Storm. And from California, the Bushwhackers, led by their captain, Ron Kilborn. And you can't have a national tournament without this team. The All-Americans, back-to-back champions of the 91-92 Masters in Nashville. And out of California, perhaps one of the oldest pro team, we have Navarone. 
And one of the newest pro team to play the circuit is the good, bad, and deadly GBD. This tournament is sanctioned by the MPPL, and MPPL rules are in effect. The game is capture the flag with a 25 minute time limit. The live flag rule is in effect, and there are six judges to a field. The chronograph speed is 300 feet per second. Teams are awarded three points for each elimination, 10 points for a first flag pull, and 60 points for a flag hang. Teams can be penalized points for a live player checking out with an obvious and an unobvious hit. Points are deducted for hot gun violations. With 33 of the 124 games that are played today, we're going to show you the highlights of day one. After the first day of preliminary play, we have five teams with perfect scores of 300. While 6th through 10th place is separated by only 6 points, there are only 18 points separating 11th through 16th place, while the remaining teams had a very rough day. Up next, day 2 of the preliminary play when paintball action sports returns. Yesterday, the top five seeded teams all had perfect scores. And for the first game today, we're going to watch one of those top five teams. The All-Americans take on the Untouchables.
Tommy, look up the hill, babe, up the hill. One! We're going the lowest time. Richie! George! George, you got Richie! As expected, the All-Americans defeat the Untouchables 91 to 21. And on other preliminary games to report, we have Aftershock defeating the Dogs of War 100 to 15, and GBD maxing their game against Navarone 100 to 3. Up next, the Texas Storm take on Eclipse. With Eclipse having the first flag pull, it was the Texas Storm with the hang for the win of 87 to 37. In other games, we have Bad Company spanking Storm from California, 100 to 3. The Bushwhackers edging out the Joker's Wild in body count, 21 to 12. The All-Americans continue their winning ways over the Texas Storm second game, 100 to 18. 
and the Untouchables get their first max of the tournament over Eclipse's second game, 100 to 21. Play is set to begin on field one with Aftershock against Bad Company. Go, 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 go! Big bunker, Tommy. We got two up here at the top. With the hang by Aftershock, the score was 100 to 15. And we caught up with Aftershock's captain, Rennick Miller, and asked him if their game plan worked against bad company. It seemed to work real good. We decided to push the low side over the logs here. No one seems to have tried that yet. We didn't feel they had enough cover, so we came over the logs. It seemed to work out real good. In other games played this second day, we have GBD defeating the Jokers Wild 100 to 27. And again, after Shock playing their last game of the day against Storm of California, 106. The Bushwhackers whacking on Navarone, 119. And Bad Company barely edging the Dogs of War, 31 to 27. GBD did some whacking of their own on the Bushwhackers, 95 to 18. And the All-Americans easily defeating Eclipse for a score of 100 to 4. Storm is perfect while the Dogs of War are not so perfect due to penalties. Navarone avenges on an earlier loss to the Jokers Wild with a score of 85 to 24. The Untouchables were touched all over by the pain of the Texas Storm to the tune of 95 to 21. Even with penalties, Tour de Force stomps Urban Survival 50 to 3. The same can be said about the Geese as they edge Storm BC 42 to 25. The Ironman nearly got beat by Black Sunday, but bounced back to thump Fatal Swoop 100-6. It's Washington rain over the Texas Black Diamonds 100-27. It's the Palm Beach Predators over Storm BC 100-12. The Ironman also over Storm 90-34. Black Sunday has their way with the Predators 100-24. It's Fatal Swoop swooping down on their prey, the Geese, 124. But the wild geese recover to beat Black Sunday 124. Here's a low scoring game. Washington Rain edging out Tour de Force 18 to 15. The Palm Beach Predators maxing their last game 124 of the Fatal Swoop. Urban Survival was stomped all over by Washington Rain only to have the Texas Black Diamonds do it to them 115. And finally, the last game of the day, Tour de Force is upset by the Texas Black Diamond, 100 to zip. Before we go on to the semifinals, here's a little more game video for you to enjoy. 
We find out who made it to the semifinals when paintball action sports returns. It's the last day of play, and let's take a look at the results of two days of preliminary play. Aftershock is the only team to have a perfect score of 600, with GBD, All-Americans, and Ironman in Washington Rain rounding out the top five. We find the Palm Beach Predators in sixth place, followed by Black Sunday, Tour de Force, Bad Company, Texas Black Diamonds, and in 11th place, the Bushwhackers. In 12th place, it's Eclipse with 277 points, followed by Fatal Swoop, Texas Storm, Wild Geese, and Team Storm from California in 16th. The 17th spot belongs to the Jokers Wild with 191 points, with the rest of the teams rounding out the final 22 spots. With only 8 teams advancing into the amateur semifinals and 8 teams advancing into pro semifinals, teams are placed into new divisions. In the amateur semifinals, we have in Division A, Storm from California, The Untouchables, Eclipse, and Black Sunday. In Division B, we have the Texas Black Diamond, Joker's Wild, Washington Rain, and Fatal Swoop. In the pro semifinals, we have in Division A, GBD, The Bushwhackers, Ironman, and Tour de Force. In Division B, we have the All-Americans, Bad Company, Aftershock, and the Palm Beach Predators. With the division set, let's show you an amateur semifinal game between the Jokers Wild against Washington Rain. Take the pile, Dave. Watch it, Jay! I got him. In a game with three flagpoles, time runs out with the score of Washington Rain 40, Jokers Wild 27. 
With that in mind, we asked Brian Garbarino of the Washington Rain of a quick rundown of the final few minutes of the game. Well, the game went really well. Our numbers were calling out, and it, for, towards the beginning of the game, we were doing pretty well. Um, my side, my gun went down a couple times. I stripped down my line and goes direct bottle, and uh, find out I was out of air, go to the side of borrow a tank from somebody. Um, we were holding the top wire on the hill for a while, and I noticed that uh, we had about eight minutes left in the game, and we heard no firing on the other side of the line anymore. So uh, we split up. I, I was hold the wire for three minutes or four minutes. Uh, so to give me enough time to get into the flag station, grab the flag, and come back. On the way down, I moved slowly and carefully down the hill, running nobody, noticed that Phil, my uh, partner, had a uh, fl holding the flag up in the ground, which told me there was one more player or two more players left that eliminated him. So I came down and uh, into the flag station and uh, saw it. I uh, heard a trampling coming through the field. Looked to my side, and there was a joker running the flag in. Popped him and then tried to run the flag back into the flag station and uh, just cut short time. Didn't make it. Being the only amateur semifinal game being shown, here's the rest of the amateur semifinal scores. Washington Rain defeats the Texas Black Diamonds 100-3. The Joker's Wild having no problem with Fatal Swoop 100-18. And Eclipse defeats Black Sunday 100-15. And it's California Storm over the Untouchables, 91 to 18. Fatal Swoop loses again to Washington Rain, 90 to 28. While the Joker's Wild has the last laugh over the Diamonds, 93 to 13. Black Sunday is winners over Storm, 100 to 3. And the Untouchables with penalty points lose to Eclipse, 100 to minus 38. Fatal Swoop finally gets a max over the Texas Black Diamonds. Storm spanks Eclipse and Black Sunday defeats the Untouchables only to have penalties that could keep them from advancing. Let's now jump right into the pro semifinal game between the All-Americans versus Aftershock. Right 
It's the All-Americans defeating Aftershock 100-12. And in other pro semifinal games, we'll find that the Ironman defeats GBD 109 and Bad Company loses to the Palm Beach Predators 100-15. The score is 100-6 in favor of Tour de Force over the Bushwhackers. It's Aftershock over the Predators and GBD over Tour de Force. The All-Americans are too much for Bad Company as they win 100 to 18. Field 1 is ready to go as we watch the Ironmen take on the Bushwhackers. Go, 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 go. Sweet 
It's the Ironmen over the Bushwhackers, 100 to 9. And some last pro semifinal scores to report. We have the All-Americans defeating the Predators, 100 to 9. And Aftershock rolling over Bad Company, 100 to 18. The Ironmen have no problem with Tour de Force. And the Bushwhackers saying, we're not going to the finals, so neither are you, GBD. As the Bushwhackers defeat GBD, 100 to 18. Up next, the total on game scores of both amateur and pro semifinals, and we'll find out who advances to the finals when we return. Hi, my name's Glenn Palmer. I'm owner-operator of Palmer's Pursuit Shop based out of Sacramento, California. We specialize, though, in converting existing equipment, uh, bringing up to competitive standards, specializing primarily in Sheridan products. We have a full line of retail products. If you have a, an existing Sheridan pump gun and would like it turned into a semi-automatic, you can send your gun to us or you can call for a free catalog of our work at area code 916-923-9676. Wow. In the amateurs, we have Washington Rain taking top spot with a score of 230 points. And in the pros, the All-Americans had a perfect semifinals with 300 points, with the Ironman close behind. So in the amateur finals, we have Washington Rain, Joker's Wild, Eclipse, and California Storm. In the pro finals, we have the All-Americans, Ironman, Aftershock, and Tour de Force. But before we move on, I had a chance to talk with the MPPL's representative, Steve Davidson, about their first year as a league. Uh, we are having five tournaments. Uh, we move the locations around the country to give different people a different opportunity to come to these things. Uh, and they're going to be five-day events. We're going to be introducing a five-player MPPL format okay. in addition to the ten-player. Uh, we're going to roll out uh, all the changes and improvements that we've uh, made from the lessons that we've learned this year. Um, we're addressing some financial issues. I'm sure that a lot of teams would like to know that uh, we are going to be lowering the entry fee for the amateur teams uh, on our circuit next year. Uh, and we're trying to uh, work with the rest of the paintball industry to uh, get them involved as much as possible, uh, give them a stake in these tournaments, and uh, just improve the uh, circumstance for everybody. Great. Now let's take a look at an amateur finals game between Washington Rain versus the Joker's Wild. Go, 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 go. They're storming the top! They're storming the top! They're storming the top! I don't know what's going on. Jason, how are we doing in the battle?
Players clean. He's in. He's in. Neutral clear. Washington Rain defeated the Jokers Wild 97 to 18. Now let's take a look at a pro final game between the Ironmen and Aftershock. Go, go, go. go. Aftershock defeated the Ironmen 100 to 18. And in other games to report, the All-Americans defeated Tour de Force 100 to 6. And again, Tour de Force faces another loss as the Ironmen get a max in their second game of the finals, 100 to 18. And in game two of the finals, 
It's the All-Americans defeating Aftershock 100-6. Now on to the last game in the Pro Finals as it's the Ironmen against the All-Americans. The Ironmen win 97-21, to but it looks like they lost too many players to win the tournament. Up next, results of the Amateur and Pro Finals on Paintball Action Sports Return. Every year in Portland, Oregon, don't forget to stop by Splat Action Paintball Field, Oregon's largest and longest running field. There's over 60 guns available for rent and over 80 acres and 15 fields to play on. Come experience the thrill, the excitement, only at Splat Action, located just southeast of Portland, Oregon. back as teams start to assemble together for the award ceremony. The final results are in as Washington Rain takes first in the amateur finals and the pro finals we have the All-Americans taking first with a total score of 221 points. 
Ironman in second, Aftershock taking third with 203 points, and Tour de Force taking home fourth place. Let's go back to the staging area where the award ceremonies has begun. In the amateurs, fourth place goes to Storm from California. And third place belongs to the Joker's Wild, making this their third straight event which they had placed. And in second, it's Eclipse from the state of Washington. And first place belongs to Washington Rain from the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> In the pros, we have Tour de Force taking fourth, and Aftershock taking third. And the Ironman is now set to receive their second place award. National champs, baby. And finally, the All-Americans taking home the championship. I'd like to start out thanking the sponsors. PMI RP Shear for our paint, smart parts for our rifled barrels, vents, awesome goggle, and finally, Air gun design for the, I think, the best gun out there. Yeah. Um, I'd like to especially thank the uh, referees, Black Diamonds and CP, for the help. And I think this is an excellent finish to a terrific year for the NPPL. We hope to see you all in Texas, our first <laughs> event in March. Thanks again.